Another day, another bumper consumer quiz. This morning, we're looking at the surprising myths around holiday travel. Mm, it's just around the corner, mm. isn't it? For more, we're joined by consumer affairs commentator Joe Uchukolo. Hey, jo. Great to see you again, Joe. Okay, let's kick this off. This is the myth or not? Budget airlines are always the cheapest. True or false? This one is false. So people think that budget means cheaper, but it's not true. You need to include the taxes, meals and baggage when you're looking at what's going to be cheaper overall. So sometimes it's worthwhile looking for two single fares rather than a return fare because that could often be cheaper. And if you do have excess luggage, sometimes it's actually cheaper to fly business class because they'll give you more luggage allowance. So definitely shop around um, and look at the, the total price rather That's than just thinking okay. the budget's shame. cheaper. Now, flights are always cheaper on Tuesday evenings. True or false? This one again is false, I'm sorry to say. There's no set time for any cheaper airfares. To purchase them. To purchase mm. them. So the best thing to do is either look as far out as you can, so you've thought about travelling in a few months' time, keep looking at the airfares. And some research says that airfares are usually cheaper six weeks prior to flying. So that's what some research says, but just keep an eye out and set up some of those alerts to see when flights are cheaper. <laughs> that's a tip. Unless the research has been done by sixweeksout.com. <laughs> That's right. Well, are people getting their movie tickets and their flight ticket Tuesday, cheap Tuesdays mixed up, were they? That, I think that might be it, yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Choosing your destination last can what? save you money. So what you're saying here is that if we... Well, what are you saying? Is it true or false? Okay. Ch choose your destination last. <laughs> this one, interestingly, is true. So think about when you want to travel. So it might be during school holidays or it might be April next year and consider the time period and then look for where is having the deals. So you might say, I want to travel in April and I want a beach holiday, but have a look out for which areas. They might be international, they might be domestic and see what deals come How do you do that? Oh, yeah. just, just start doing some research, start doing some searches on the internet what? and then oh, they'll what? start <laughs> suggesting Sorry. Larry's out. Sorry. How what? do you spell research? Research? <laughs> research. Is that well, two words or Also, one? the newspaper, they often have travel deals listed as okay, well. So, so just keep an eye out. Yeah, yeah, that's, that only works if you don't care where you're going. I generally tend to care where I'm going. Yep, uh, but th there's plenty of travellers who just want to go on a break and they, they can get that time in April or June. They have a specific time window okay. where they can take a break. That's an interesting way of looking at it, right? Yeah. You can get better accommodation deals than what's advertised by providers. True or false, Joe? Good news, this one is true. Okay. So some of those websites are really great at showing us all the different prices for different hotels and you know, we can go and have a look at roughly which hotel we want and roughly mm -hmm. the price. But then if you contact that hotel or accommodation provider directly, ask for inclusions at that price that you see advertised. So ask for free breakfast, ask for parking, ask for Wi-Fi, get some chucked in deals and then you'll end up saving because you get the same price as what you've seen yeah, on a website. Yeah, yeah. I was on the phone to some accommodation place just last week. The woman, I rang her up, I had the price in front of me, I rang her up and she said, take the deal on the internet, it's actually cheaper than what I can give you over the phone. And I said, that's crazy. And she said, I know, I'm suggesting take the deal on the internet rather than booking it with me over the phone. Wow, and did you book into Formula One? You got in all right? <laughs> There's plenty of rooms yeah. by the hour, as it turns out. <laughs> Exchanging money at airports usually means you'll get a worse exchange rate, like not a very good one. Yeah. This, true or false? This is true. true. So, changing money at the airport is the worst thing you can do. Think of anything else. So, sometimes you can... Um, order currency online to collect at the airport, that way you'll get a better exchange rate. Then you can also buy some of those currency cards. They also give you a better exchange rate than changing at the airport. Then that'll give you a fixed exchange rate to use mm. um, in local ATMs and shops when you're travelling. Yeah. Uh, um, and also your credit card generally has a better exchange rate than what you'll get at the airport. But just watch out for those for foreign currency fees. So you, you go into the ATM when you land, you take out your foreign currency, but you're going to get the fees on oh, top of that. Oh, yes. And the, yeah. that, that you'll get foreign, foreign currency fees. A lot of the banks now have got those fee-free things, right? The, 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 those are the, the prepaid currency, currency cards. Yeah, that works out all right. Those are great. Have a look yeah. at those. Right. Yep. Travel insurance covers you for acts of terrorism. True or false? Now, this one is false. Most, most of the policies won't cover you for acts of terrorism, but it does pay to have a look. So they will cover you for medical costs and lost baggage and all those mm. things um, that we'd like to always have when we travel but acts of terrorism is generally excluded but it does pay to ask that specific question with so, so many events happening yeah. these days.
Can I just ask you a quick question without notice? I'm not going to ask it because I know you know the answer. Just remind us, you know on your credit card and you go into a merchant, a shop, yes. and they want to charge you a fee? Some, some rule was coming in by a certain date that they couldn't do that. What, can you just refresh my memory? So now, yep. for all credit card transactions in Australia, mm -hmm. the, the surcharge that they charge must be cost reflective, meaning it must be the charge that the banks charge the merchant. Right. So it should be around 2 to 3%. It shouldn't be exorbitant, which is 50 cents for a coffee transaction. Right. No, I saw mm -hmm. one in a coffee shop just this week and I wanted to say something, but I wasn't very sure of my facts. So I just wanted to... Is that yeah. a rule or is it just a, a polite request? No, it's all merchants now, any company right. that's that's trading with um, credit cards. So if they are charging you, just remind them politely to say, look, you better have a look at this because it's wrong. It can only, you can only charge me one or two percent. Yeah, yeah, but around about that amount. Around yeah. about. Yeah. Should we not say things on this show if we're not sure of the facts? Is that like a no, new that's rule? Oh, no, that's, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely a rule yeah. from the 1st of September. <laughs> this shop had, if for a transaction under $20, we're going to charge you 50 cents. Exactly right. So that, they're, that, not they're not to allowed to do that. They're not allowed to do that anymore. And the ACCC is still um, taking action against merchants that do do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, good to know. Good stuff. All right, thank, thank you, you, Joe. We'll talk to you soon. Pleasure.